What's your name? Matthew? Okay, okay. What's your nationality? Native American. You're a Native American. Okay, read this now. Really listen and really understand. Listen really hard. Because we're saying that so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans, they are the Israelites. Now, the Bible says prove all things. So now we're going to prove it according to the Bible. You're a so-called, uh, you say a Native American, right? So give me Isaiah 40, verse 46. Isaiah 46, verse 10. Now we're going to prove that you are so-called Gadite according to the Bible. All right, go ahead, read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 46, verse 10. Uh-huh. Declaring the end from the beginning. So the Bible declares the end from the beginning. Your people have a lot of history, like when Christopher Columbus, Hernan Cortez, all that history, that lost history that was destroyed, all that's in the Bible. And the Bible declares it from the beginning, meaning from the time of Genesis, from the time of, uh, from the time of uh, Adam. The Bible declares it. Read it again. Declaring the end from the beginning. So the Bible declares the end from the beginning. That's why the Bible is the number one sold book on the planet. And it's your history. And we're going to prove that. Read. Right. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. Saying from ancient times, the things have yet not done. Okay. Saying, my counsel shall stand. And I will do all my pleasure. All my pleasure. Now, give me Isaiah, I mean Genesis chapter 49. Start at verse 1. Now we're going to prove to you what your nationality is according to the Bible, who you really are. All right, go ahead. The book of Genesis chapter 49 verse 1. Uh-huh. And Jacob called unto his sons uh -huh. and said, gather yourselves together. So now, Jacob said, gather his sons, his 12 sons. He said, gather yourselves together, read, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. So he's going to tell his son what's going to happen to the Israelites in the last days. Are you with me? Now let's read it again. I want to make sure you stay with me. Read it again. Genesis chapter 49 verse 1. Uh -huh. And Jacob said unto his son, and said, Gather yourselves together, uh -huh. that I may tell you that which shall befall in the last day. Now this is know. a prophecy. Now this is going to happen. We're in the last day, the last day today, right? Okay. Now let's see. Give me verse 19. Verse 19. Uh-huh. Gad. Gad. That's what we're saying. We say that the Native Americans are the so-called Gadites. It said what? Gad. Now, this was going to bestow the so-called Gadites in the last days. Go ahead. A troop shall overcome him. A what? A troop shall overcome him. So what troop that un defeated the so-called Gadites, the so-called Native Americans? Andrew, you remember those troops? The U.S. troops? They defeated you. Because you so-called Hispanics, you guys were the last tribe to actually be defeated by the so-called white men. Right. So go ahead, read it again. God, a troop shall overcome him. So what troops? The U.S. troops, led by Andrew Jackson. Go ahead. But he shall overcome at the last. So overcome. When Jesus Christ comes back, guess what? You're going to overcome at the last. So these are all the things that are going to bestow the Israelites in the last days. That's specifically right. to you so-called Gallites, which the Bible says are the Native Americans. It says a troop shall overcome you. Give me Deuteronomy chapter, I mean Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 20. Now let's bring out more prophecy. Let's bring out more proof, more understanding about who are the so-called Native American Indians. You got it? Yes, sir. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 33, verse 20. Uh-huh. And of God he said. And of God he said, you so-called Native Americans, read. Blessed he that enlargeth God. It's a blessed he that enlargeth God. So now, God have what? The U.S., right? 
So now, you guys have the large proportion of land before the so-called white man came over here. You had the Mexican had Mexico. You got so-called Puerto Ricans with the uh, Puerto Ricans, Simeonians, all those. But you so-called Gadites, you had the big portion of the land, which is the northern uh, Canada and the U.S. So go ahead, read it again. Verse 20. Uh-huh. And of God he said, uh-huh. Blessed be that he that enlarges God. So go ahead. He enlarges as a lion. Uh-huh. Read it. Uh -huh. And of he said. And of he said, you so-called Native Americans. Read. Blessed be he that enlargeth God. Uh-huh. He dwelleth as a lion. Uh-huh. And teareth the arm and the crown of the head. Now read that part again. And do what? And teareth the arm. He what? Teareth the arm. So he said he teareth the arm. With the crown of the head. Are you familiar with the Native American, how they do the blood rituals? How they tear their arms? You're not, you're not familiar with that history. Well, the Native Americans, this is what they used to do. They used to rip their arms and do blood brother ritual. You're never familiar with that. Well, you're learning today. Yes, your people are known for that. So read that part again. Verse 20. Uh-huh. And of God he said, Uh-huh. Blessed be he that enlargeth God. Go ahead. He dwelleth as a lion and teareth the arm with the crown of the head. Uh-huh. Verse 20. And he provided the first part for himself. Uh -huh. The first part is dealing with the U.S. That's why it belongs to your people. Go ahead. Because that in a portion of the law giver uh -huh. was he seated. Uh-huh. Because you guys used to give the laws to all the so-called Puerto Ricans, Mexicans. You guys was the law giver over here in North America. Go ahead. And he came with the heads of the people. Uh-huh. He executed the justice of the Lord. Okay. Now give me First Chronicles chapter 5 verse 18. Now let's give you more information. Now these are scriptures that specifically point to the so-called Native Americans on who you are. Because you have been familiar with the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? Then where are they lost from? Their nationality, their heritage, their customs, their land, their God, everything. Go ahead. The book of First Chronicles, chapter 5, verse 18. Uh-huh. The sons of Reuben and the Gadites and half of the tribe of Manasseh and the valid men. Men able to bear buckler and sword. Now read it again. Verse 18. Now read it slow. The sons of Reuben. Now the sons of Reuben, read. And the Gadites. And the Gadites, which is your people, your tribe, the so-called Native Americans, read. And the half-tribe of Manasseh. Those are the so-called Cubans. Go ahead. Availant men. Men able to bear buckler with the sword. It says men that are able to bear buckler with the sword, meaning you guys was great warriors. That's right. Warriors. That's right. Go ahead. And shoot with bow. And shoot with what? With bow. And shoot with what? With bow. Now your people are known for that. For the bows and arrow. Because guess what? God gave y'all these abilities. Right. The ability is the spirit for war to build. You guys were great warriors. Right. That's why the U.S. spent a hard time trying to take you down. You got the scripture? Psalms 50. Yeah. Psalms 55 verse 20. Uh-huh. He has put forth his hand. Against such as be at peace with him. So now, when the so-called U.S., with the so-called, not the U.S. yet, with the so-called white man came over here, you guys were at peace with the so-called white man. Now read that again. He has put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. Now, when the so-called Caucasian race came over here, did your people start going to war with him? No, you guys was peaceful, a very peaceful people. Right. Go ahead. He has broken his covenant. Now he has what? Broken his covenant. Now, are you familiar with the U.S. treaties that they had with the so-called Native Americans? Now, did they keep either one of those treaties? No. They broke all the treaties. This is what we're reading about right here. Bring now, read it again from the top. Verse 20. Uh -huh. He has put forth his hands against such be at peace with him. Go ahead. He has broken his covenant. Now, the covenant. You heard about that. What's it? North, what is it? North Dakota? All that stuff going on? How they going to run an oil thing right through y'all land? And they're supposed to have a covenant. They're supposed to be your land, right? But guess what? They're breaking that covenant just like the Bible did. Just like they broke all other 200 treaties that y'all had. Go ahead. Verse 21. Uh-huh. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. It's, read that again. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Man, when they came over here, guess what? They had a really good lip game to y'all Native Americans. It said the word of the so-called Caucasian race was smoother than butter. They talked and killed and raped and pilgrims y'all right out this land. Yes. Go ahead. But war was in his heart. But what? But war was in his heart. Now give me that book, Black Indians. Give it to me. But it says, well, war was in his house. 
world was in their mind. That's what they did. They gave y'all with treaties, but guess what they did? They marched all the way from the so-called East Coast all the way to the West Coast, wiping y'all off the face of the planet. So what we're here to do is to give you your nationality back because guess what? The same people who did that to your people are the same people who taught you Christianity, same people who taught you Catholicism, same people who taught that you guys to call your guys Indians. So guess what? Should you be able to listen to that? Should you? Now, if you're smart, should you listen to that? Christianity, Catholicism, Could, should you listen to that? Can you trust your enemies? Give me that. Sirach, chapter 12, verse 10. Bring it out. No, you should not trust that. Because guess what? Are you a Christian? Huh? Yes. Now, where did you get Christianity from? Bring it out. The same people who did all this stuff to you, that troops, that man, that word was smoother than butter, they forced that upon your people. So we're telling you to be smart and listen to the word of the God. Because guess what? He's not going to tell you your true nationality. So go ahead, read. The book of Surah, chapter 12, verse 10. Never trust thine enemy. Now read it again. Now read what God says. God says to do what? Never trust thine enemy. Go ahead. For like as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. So it says, as iron rusted, so is his wickedness. Because guess what? When you see iron on something, guess what? You can wipe it away. You can put oil on it. But it's always going to come back. You understand what I'm saying? Go ahead, read on. Verse 11. Though he humble himself, though he humble himself, read and go crouching. Uh huh. Yet take good heed and beware of him. Uh huh. And thou shalt be unto him as thou hadst whipped a long glass. Ah, uh, wiping glass. Go ahead. And thou shalt know that his rust hath not been altogether wiped away. So guess what? Because we know that today, because they're still doing the same thing. They're breaking the treaties, and guess what? They're taking people land, just like the first day since they came over here. Now we're here to give you that history. Now give me Hosea chapter 3 verse 4. Because you said that you're a child of God. Is that what you said? Now, uh, let's, let's think about this. The Caucasian race, they murdered the most people on the face of the earth. Are they child of God? Huh? If they come to Christ. Now think about it. What people have called the most devastation, war, destruction on the face of the planet? Bring it out! What race of people? Now is God a righteous God? Okay, give me Job chapter 9, verse 24. Because what I'm trying to prove to you that you are an Israelite. That's your nationality. So now I'm going to give you some references so you can know who are people in the earth today. Because guess what? If you think your enemy, your friend, guess what? They can stab you in the back anytime. So you must know the truth. Uh, what? Okay, now we're going to get that too. Okay, brother. Now, 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 remember. Now, 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 hold on. I got you, brother. Go ahead. Job 9, verse 24. Job, chapter 9, verse 24. Uh -huh. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So it says the earth is given to the hands of the wicked. Meaning, guess what? The people who are in rulership, God calls them the wicked. Now, I'm going to ask you, who rules the earth today? Huh? Okay, go ahead. Read it again. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. It says he covered the faces of the judges thereof. Now, who are the judges? Who? Let's see who are the judges. It says he covered the faces of the judges thereof. Now, read it again from the top. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So the wicked people are rules the earth today. The earth was given to them. God gave the wicked people rulership of the earth. And you said the people who are ruling the earth is the Caucasian race. You are correct. Go ahead. He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. He covers the faces. Meaning when I cover something, that means to hide. Right. Now, who are the judges? Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Let's see who are the judges. Go ahead. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? So it says, do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? Now, out. is everybody a saint? Bring it out. Huh? What makes you a saint? By coming to Christ. By coming to Christ. Now, that's what you say. Now, we're going to go directly what the Bible says. That's right. Now, give me what the saints, who are the saints? Go ahead. Bring it out. Bring it out. Psalms 148 and 14. He also exalted the horn of his people. He exalted the horn of his people, which is Jesus the Christ. Go ahead. 
the praise of all his saints. The praise of all his saints. Now let's see who his saints are. Go ahead. Even indeed, even what? Even of the children of Israel. Even of who? Even of the children of Israel. The children of Israel are his saints. Now give me Psalms 50 verse 5. Now let's do overkill because guess what? The saints are the Israelites. They always been, they always have and always will be. Now, now we're going to prove, give you another precept so you can know who are the saints. Psalms 50 verse 5. Bring it out. Psalms chapter 50 verse 5. Uh -huh. Gather my saints together unto me. So he said, gather my saints together unto me. Let's see who the saints are. Go ahead. Those that have made a covenant. Those have what? Those that have made a covenant. With me by sacrifice. So who made a covenant with God by sacrifice? That's right. What people? Was it everybody? The Israelites, brother. They made a covenant with God by sacrifice because they are the saints. Now go back to Job chapter 9 verse 24. Now we got to go right as the Bible. The only Israelites made a covenant. The Israelites was given the law. The Israelites was given animal sacrifice. Job chapter 9 verse 24. Job chapter 9 verse 24. Uh -huh. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So the earth was given to the hands of the wicked. You paying attention? Go ahead. He covered his. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. So the judges are, thereof are the so-called Black, Hispanics, and Native Americans, right. which are the Israelites. Right. How did he cover our faces? In slavery. Because guess what? Your people walk around calling yourself Indian, which just means slave. That's right. Indian That's right. is a Latin word that derives from the word indios, which means slave. That's right. That's right. So when you call your Indian, you're calling yourself a slave. That's what you're calling yourself. Yes. You understand that? He covered the faces during slavery because guess what? Now you call yourself Native Indians. Y'all call, they call y'all savages. What, what, what different types of, uh, they call black people black. They call them African American, Negro, nigger, Hispanics. Uh, what else they call them? The so-called Hispanic. Uh, Wetbacks, they call y'all all type of things and they covered y'all faces in slavery because in slavery we could not read. So history was hidden and taken away from us. Right. The earth is given into the hands of the wicked. So the Bible says the earth was given to the hands of the wicked. Now you confirmed it. Yes, the Caucasian are the wicked because they ruled the earth. Go ahead. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. So he covered our faces in slavery. That's why we don't understand who we are, where we come from. Go ahead. That's right. If not, where? And who is he? So if it's not the white man, who is he? Is it a Chinese? Are they ruling? Is it the Koreans? Are they ruling? Hallelujah. Is it the so-called Arabs? Are they ruling? Bring it up, bro. Bring it up. No, it's the so-called white man. Yes, he is the wicked. He is the wicked. You understand that? So let's get the wicked. Give me Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Now really listen now. You said everybody can be a child of God. Now we're going to go to, we're going to go. Because first we prove that you are Israelites. So everybody cannot be a child of God. And you want to learn who are the so-called Caucasian race. So it says the earth was given to the hands of the wicked. Now let's see who are the wicked. Does God name them? Let's see. Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Whereas Edom said. Whereas Edom said. You familiar with Edom? Are you familiar with Jacob? Esau and Jacob. You familiar with that? Esau is an, Edom is another word for Esau. So go ahead. Whereas Edom said, uh -huh. we are impoverished. So it says, we are impoverished. Go ahead. But we will return and build the desolate places. Uh -huh. That's right. Thus said the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down. So this is pertaining to Edom, which are the Edomites. Which I'm saying, and the Bible saying, that they are the so-called Caucasian race. Now we're going to prove it. Go ahead. And they shall call them the border of wickedness. And they shall call them what? The border of wickedness. Now, do you know what the border of wickedness means? The border of wickedness meaning what? When you have a border, right? You have an ending of the border and you have a beginning of the border. That's what that means. It means the beginning and the ending of all wickedness. It yeah. says Edomites. Edom. They are. They are the beginning and the beginning and the ending of all wickedness. You familiar? Yeah. So now, keep reading. The border of wickedness and the people of... And now, read, read it slow. And the people now is telling you that they are a people, Edom, Edomites, and the what? The people against whom the Lord have indignation. Indignation meaning hatred. When? How long? Forever. So it says that Edom, which are the Edomites, God have hatred for them forever. That's now, right. does that change in the New Testament? 
No. Does it not change? It? Give me Rev give me uh Romans 9 verse 13. Bring it out. Let's see. Bring it out. Go ahead. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. Uh -huh. As it is written. As it is written in the Old Testament, what we just read. Jacob have I love. So it says, Jacob have I love. But Esau leave have him alone. I leave him alone. Hate it. Just read it again. As it is written. As it is written. Jacob have I love. It says, Jacob have I love. The 12 tribes of Israel. Read. But Esau have I hated. But Esau have you what? Have I hated. Now you said that everybody's a son of God, right? That's what you say. Anybody's a child of God, huh? When they come to Christ. When they come to Christ. That's what you say, right? Okay, now read Romans 9 verse 1. Now let's see if that what the Bible says. Go ahead. Romans chapter 9 verse 1. Uh-huh. I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. So Paul, Paul is speaking. He say, I say the truth in Christ. I lie not. So Christ is speaking through the epistle Paul. Go ahead. My conscience also bears me witness in the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is upon him right now. So he is not lying, right? Okay, go ahead. That I have great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Uh-huh. Go ahead. For, for I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ. So he said, I can wish. Read it slow. Read it slow. Don't read it fast. Go ahead. Read it from the top. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ. So he said, I wish that myself was a curse for Christ, from Christ. Read. For my brethren. For my brethren. My kinsmen. My kinfolk. You know what those yeah. words mean? Meaning your, your kinfolk, your brethren, kinfolk. Meaning your own people. Your kinfolk. Go ahead. According to the flesh. According to what? According to the flesh. Now read it again. Read that part. Read that verse again. For Romans chapter 9 verse 3. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ. So I can wish myself were a curse from Christ. Read. For my brethren. For my brethren. My kinsmen. My kinsmen. Now let's see who Paul brethren. Let's see who his kinsmen are. Go ahead. According to the flesh. According to the flesh. According to the bloodline. Go ahead. Who are Israelites? Who are what? Who are Israelites? Who are who? Who are Israelites? Now did he say anybody that, that doesn't sin? Or did he say who are Israelites? Okay, go ahead. Tell me up. To who pertaineth the adoption? So who pertaineth the adoption? Now you know what the adoption is of? Of Jesus Christ. Back into the old covenant. They pertains to the what? To the Israelites. Go ahead. And the glory. And the glory, meaning the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. And the covenants. And the what? And the covenants. It pertains to who? The Israelites. That's right. Go ahead. And the giving of the law. And the giving of the law. The Bible was given to the Israelites. Go ahead. And the service of God. And all the services. Go ahead. And the promises. And the what? And the promises. So all the promises pertain to who? The Israelites. Go ahead. Right. Who are the fathers? Now, who are the fathers? Read. And of whom, as concerning the flesh, as who co whom concerning the flesh? Go ahead. Christ came. Christ came according to the flesh. He came for the people of his own people according right. to the flesh. That's right. Like we don't get mad when you see Donald Trump. He's for white people. That's it makes right. sense. It's common sense. When you go to China, do you see a white man ruling over the Chinese? Bring it out. No. No, it makes sense when you come to save your own people. Everybody, look at the earth today. Everybody lives in different neighborhoods. Now, we can say that do everybody love everybody, right? So where, why do all nations and races of people live in different neighborhoods? You understand what I'm saying? Now, you got to understand that. So read that part again. Romans chapter 9, verse 4. Uh-huh. Who are Israelites says, right. to whom pertaineth the adoption uh -huh. and the glory uh -huh. and the covenant uh -huh. and the giving of the law uh -huh. and the service of God uh -huh. and the promises? Uh -huh. Who are the father and of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came? So Christ yes. came for his own people. That's it. Now it's not a racism when we're reading out the Bible. So go to Matthew chapter 1 verse 16. So let's get more information on it. Matthew chapter 1, verse 16. Uh -huh. And Jacob begot Joseph. Matthew 1, verse 21. Matthew 1, verse 21. Go ahead. And she shall bring forth a son. Uh huh. And shall bring forth a son. This is Mary bringing forth Jesus. Read. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. Go ahead. For he shall save. For he shall save his people. His. That's possessive, right? Now, did it say everybody? It says his people. Now, Jesus was an Israelite, correct? Yes. Go ahead. 
from their sins. He shall save them people, them for their sins, because they are the only people who cannot, who can receive repentance. So guess what? What you have learned, brother, is incorrect. God does not love everybody. You gotta understand. God created everything for a purpose. Pork, pig has got a purpose. Crabs has got a purpose. Even the devil. Everybody has a purpose in the earth today. But your purpose is to serve God. Now give me Hosea 3 verse 4. Now this is not racist. We're just reading out the Bible. We're, look, we ain't come out here. If the Bible says that every God loves everybody, we will say that. But guess what? The Bible does not say that. So we must come out the Bible. Because that what justifies us. Go ahead. Hosea chapter 3 verse 4. Uh -huh. For the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king. So the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, meaning a leader. The so-called black Hispanics and Native Americans, we don't have no leaders. You understand? We are people without a leader. Go ahead. And without a prince. And without a prince. Go ahead. And without a sacrifice. And without a sacrifice. That's talking about Jesus Christ. Go ahead. And without a image. And without a what? And without a image. The so-called black Hispanics do not have an image. Your people do not have an image. Your image was given to you by the same people who raped, murdered, and robbed you. They took your image. So we're going to read about that. Let's read this black history. Let's read history. This is called a book called William, uh, Black Indians, A Hidden Heritage by William Lorenz Crass. So let's read some history in this book. Black Indians, a hidden heritage. Go ahead. Now, we're going to read some history. Now, the black and Hispanic history, guess what? Our history shed light on the devil. Right. That's why our history is pretty much illegal to talk about. It it's illegal to talk about the black, Hispanics, and Native American. Our history is illegal. Right. And America makes it illegal. Right. So as soon as we start reading our history, we become racist. Right. That makes no damn sense. That makes no damn sense because guess what? Our history shed a light on the people who are very evil. Right. That's why nobody wants to hear. That's why your history, black man, Hispanic man, Native Indian man, your history is illegal to talk about. But we're going to read it. Go ahead. Page 29. Uh-huh. In the century following Columbus landing. So when Christopher Columbus came, a Caucasian, read. Millions of Native Americans died. Millions of Native Americans died. Millions of people. Go ahead. From a combination of European diseases. So European diseases was brought over here to the so-called Native Indians. Go ahead. Harsh treatments and murder. And murder. That's what happened to our people. That's our history. That's you so-called Indians, y'all history. Go ahead. Africans took their places in the mind. You so-called Negroes replaced the so-called Native Indians because the white man killed them at an alarming rate. So they ship us to replace our brothers. Go ahead. And film of the new world. Uh-huh. The 80 million Native Americans. Read that part again. The 80 million Native Americans. The 80 million Native Americans that was over here in 1492. Go ahead. Alive. Alive. Go ahead. In 1492 became only 10 million left alive a century later. So 80 years uh, uh, after Christopher Columbus, 80 million people, 80 million Indians was living. 80 years later, only 10 million Indians left. They killed over 70 million Native Indians. And guess what? And they still have the audacity to even say something to us. Think about it. Look how much blood, how much blood, rape, and murder that's on our oppressors' hands. So let's read that again. The 80, it's out the 80 million. The 80 million Native Americans alive in 1492 uh -huh. became only 10 million left alive a century later. So they killed over 70 million Indians. Yes. 70 million! That's crazy. That's crazy. That was killing, that was killing us like a, a factory. You so-called Native Indians. Exactly. Go ahead, keep reading. But the 10,000 Africans uh -huh. working in the Americas in 1527 uh -huh. had, by the end of the century, became 90,000 people. Go ahead. These figures are even more striking within local areas. In 1519, when the Spaniards arrived, Mexico had a population of 25 million Indians. So Indian. when the Spaniards arrived in Mexico, it was over 25 million, you so-called Mexicans. Now let's see after the white man came. Let's see what happened. Go ahead. By the end of the century, only a million were still alive. So they killed over 24 million. 
And you guys wonder how y'all became the minority. We're reading it right now. That's so right. this is y'all history. Bring it out. Y'all, our history is taboo in America. That's right. And guess what? And we will still have people coming over here hollering us out of all the murder. Out of all the murder and rape and pilgrimage. Because guess what? They don't want you to know this. Right. right. They don't want you to know your history. 500 years of oppression, 500 years of looking for equality and, and justice. When we, the red man, the black man, the red woman, the red black woman, when the first slave escaped, was taken in by my ancestors through this whole hemisphere, on day one, we became blood brothers. Day one, we fought side by side. What happened? I'm asking you today, my brothers, if we could get our minds together, the red and the black, we are the majority. We wouldn't have to ask for equality and injustice because we could raise our finger and they would give it to us. They don't want to know who you are because that's what they say. Knowledge is power. Give me Hosea 4. You know what I want? Yeah. Huh? Yes. Knowledge is power, and guess what they did? They took this knowledge away from us. Because you can't find none of these books in, in high school, in preschool, and you can't find none of these books. Because guess what? The person who conquers, guess what? They write the history. But guess what? We got the history. We're going to read it, and we're not afraid to stand bold for our people and let right. them know the truth. Right. Go ahead. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. Uh -huh. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So the Israelites, God's chosen people, God said your people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge, a knowledge of who you are, where you come from, your laws, your customs. Why are you in the condition that you are in today? God said you are lost from it. Go ahead. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. So God said you reject the knowledge. You reject the truth because a lot of people, so-called black and Hispanics, they reject this history. They reject it, and, and guess what? They love the oppressor. Right. So God will reject you. God will reject you when you reject the truth. Shalom, Israel. I'm Elder Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, Please make sure you subscribe to this and join our UIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.